get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. Most of the time we get him at 20 pass. We're going to get him at 42 pass, which is a beautiful thing. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You'll see the opening call right on the left-hand side. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. When you get Basil's newsletter, you're going to get about 12 great archives so that you can understand exactly how you ride that wave and how Basil looks at the market each and every day. Every Saturday, you're going to get a rundown that's incredible. You can sit around on your weekend. You have fun with the kids, the grandkids, whatever you're doing as you read it and get ready for Monday morning. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm glad you got through all those difficulties. Great to have you yeah, on, it, man. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's and all I, that matters. With, with You're technology, here. <laughs> technology, you can have one little dot that goes in the wrong place, and all of a sudden, everything goes <laughs> shut Yeah, down. tell anyway, that to the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> unbel I had a glitch, but boy, did they have a glitch this morning. This is There were some stocks that were 20% up and 20% down yes. from their closing price yesterday. I don't know how they resolved that. I know from May 2010 was it. I remember that day so well. I was playing tennis, yep. and I said to my partner, "I've got to get back. The, the, the market's down a thousand points, and I got <laughs> back just in time to do some trading on the up." Seriously. So this is this is something I don't know how to resolve it. But what really is fascinating is that the indexes themselves are telling us quite a story. So now I'm showing uh, you the Dow. Okay. Um, right here, and the Dow is up 38 points. It was up uh, quite a bit more. But what's really important is that you see this. I'll just show you this for a second. Yeah, I've shown it to you for about three weeks now. And I've said, oh, yes. this is what I'm watching so closely. These are weekly charts, black background. This is the QQQ. Let me just start off with the, with the Dow. And the reason why we're still along the Dow, still actually a little bit quite aggressively uh, along the Dow, although we've taken some profits, uh, is that it's so nicely above the inside track repellent zone now that's a propellant zone and you can see the green line is the nine period moving average it means we're in a sideways digestive phase but look at this the s p we've been waiting for i mean weeks and weeks i've been showing you this chart and it has even this week we have to wait till friday it hasn't closed above that green line the inside track a little mini channel and in the car it's been a fantastic repellent you want that to become a propellant but it did turn green with a nine over the 14 the MAGD is good. Stochastic is improving. It's now 78%. I like 80% or more. The green on balance volume is working well. So this is a weekly chart. First time we, for the three weeks in a row. We had three weeks before, but it couldn't break out. This is the third week, and we're touching that green line. Look at the QQQ. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Finally, touching that green line. Uh, it's midweek. We're going to see. Actually, it's got a, a few days to go. We're going to see if it's able to close above that line. Look at the MACD is improving. Stochastics improving. On balance volume, the green line, and the IWM Russell 2000. So I've been showing you this for ages. Look, the Russell 2000 actually has been above for three weeks now, and it's starting to say. And small caps are participating in some way. So, the, so you know, I talked to you about rotational markets. How sometimes. On the upside, when things are getting overextended in one particular index or a couple of indexes, then other indexes or stocks that have been really very weak, like a, like a Shopify or those stocks that just got hammered to the downside, suddenly have these huge rallies off the low. Well, we, that's what we're seeing here. So there's a rotation going on. But I think sideways for the moment is what we're looking at. And you can see that here in the Dow chart. But what, what's really important to me, looking at... And this is what I've been trying to do for subscribers. If you're trying to get into sectors that look like they have room to rally, it doesn't tell you how much, but it says they've got very good support and they are able to hold sharp moves to the downside. So we're going to see how that works here. And most importantly, what, what is a factor is that if you look at the VIX index, the VIX index is still way down at 19, under 20. Now, people say, oh, at 19, it used to be at 8 and 7. You know, you, could, you can go back, but things change. And through COVID, there's been a huge change. So I don't look at a price as if it's a fixed price. 
So for me, the volatility index, if it starts to go from 19 to the 21, 22 area, that's going to say, okay, now be very careful. So don't think that it has to go to a certain number. If it starts to rally and it goes towards the 22s, market becomes very vulnerable. So in, in this context, if you're looking at, say, the XLK, which is the um, tech sector, the tech sector has finally gone to the 200 period moving average. Uh, and I, I like to look at these things and say, look, you don't have to prove anything to me. Just show me what you do. And in this particular instance, look how the 200 period moving average on the S&P Select uh, Spider Fund was resistance. Then it became a propellant and then it became resistance. And from that slide back in August, Never looked back, couldn't get back, and then for, finally it started touching the uh, 200 period moving average. But even at that peak D, and I always look at the fourth highest peak, peak D, as something to be careful of. And look what happened. It went above, came back down. We're back in leg D. We're on, the we're, so we're on leg D again. now, right? Okay. And we're on leg D. It will be probably, we've only got another five minutes to go or so. So it will be a peak D today because I can't see it making a new high above okay. yesterday's high. So I look at these things and I say, tell me what's happening. I don't have to tell you what's happening. So the 200 period moving average says it's a magnet. It's a magnet even on the S&P. Look, I'll go back. Oops, I'll go back to the S&P. And how it deals with it, and I like to look at it and say, okay, you've become a magnet. Before you were a, a repellent, yes. you become a magnet. So here we are, stuck on the 200 period moving average. Right. You want to see in the, by Monday of next week, you want to see the S&P either in the 4,028, 4, 4,032 level, or if it starts to pull back, then that's telling us that it just hasn't yet got the power to break through. So I right. think this is a, a very nice, we've had a fabulous move. Uh, over the last couple of weeks. And now I think this is a kind of a digestive phase, a rotational phase. And I think by Friday, you can tell which sectors are holding very well. I don't know what's going to happen with the uh, with that huge spike. I mean, we were in VZ. We, we got out of that because I wasn't prepared to wait for the earnings report today. And then look what happened. Look at this. It has a high today of, it closes yesterday at about 39. And it has a high of 44.73 and a low of 32.76. I don't know what you do with this, but I, I what they What they said, Basil, is that they, they're going to break these trades after the close. They are. Okay. Um, yeah. But the real question is, we both know this, when, you're, when you do trade, folks, okay, I suspect people are still going to lose money and make money oh. because it's like, what do yeah. you do? Just like, okay, they don't, no one didn't, this announcement was only made uh, literally 10 minutes ago, folks, okay? So if you're in or you're out, what are they going to do with your other trades as you trade around it, you know? And not only that, people use that money for other things. Uh, totally, and so, and, no, exactly, just, exactly. No, you know? it's, a, it's an embarrassment to this right. face and it should not happen. Yeah. So it's going to be an important week. I want to see the Dow in the 34,200s by Friday. That'll be really good. There we go folks come over to our website at tfnn you're going to go to newsletters hit newsletters basil the opening calls right on the right hand side basil you have a great night safe night we look forward to show tomorrow thank you very much tom you thank too. you stay right there folks we'll come right back Dow right now is up 77 nasdaq's down 43 s p's off eight